<laughs> During the intro, after Kelly said I could help get gum off your desk, Chris goes, I can do that with PowerShell. <laughs> <laughs> I've been able to stop laughing since. I, I somehow doubt it, but, <laughs> but prove me. What's JJ's prove comment? It. Prove it, man. If every, all you got's a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Huh? Uh, that's right. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> uh, that was a lot of alphabet soup, Kelly. O U D N S A B C, whatever. Anywho, G U M. Um, again, guys, have <laughs> you gonna ride on Chris? <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris. He's Chris. <laughs> Anywho, having a clean DNS, uh, you know, I'm going to lose it here. Having a clean DNS is going to help you guys do your inventory. You know, basically getting things back in order, coming back again from, say, vacation or being on summer break. So we should jump back in, into this, and I'm going to let Chris start with a few things, huh? All right. So one of the first things that we know happen, especially if you're on vacation or you come back, if you, if you work in the school in a school environment, you come back after several months and you have all these credentials that have expired passwords. Uh, this also happens throughout the year, but it's a good thing to really kind of rein in early on. So what are generally, what generally happens to make that, you know, them expire? Well, there's a lot of different ways to do that. I mean, if you're in an Active Directory environment, you probably have uh, settings for your passwords that have, you know, complexity you requirements. You should have settings for those should, guys. Should, no, good point, yes, yeah, should. Sure. As well as having them expire and need to be reset after a certain uh, set period of time, which, depending upon the environment, I've been where they've reset every four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, uh, never. But if they are resetting, you need to check those, especially in inventory and uh, PDK deploy for the credentials part. We'll just pull that up real quickly. And show you what I'm talking about, which you probably all do. Yeah, I'll, good thing if you uh, if your credentials are wrong and you go out and run, it's going to disable that account. If you've got that, you should have that right. set up. So, but you can just open up the one that you're using mm -hmm. already and just change the password right there directly. We have password, and type the new one. It's just that simple. Hit OK. You're good to go. If you need to update the background service, if it's running as someone uh, a separate account, like you have a service account, do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, hit change. Change the password. And we will actually have a new password. Well, what about machines that have been sitting so long they've actually lost, uh, what is it, their password, their token with the domain? Uh, that happens quite a bit, actually. So that's another thing you guys probably run into. Yeah, if you've ever seen, if you've ever uh, attempted to log on to a machine and you see something that says, uh, what is it, local uh, trust relationship with the domain has expired mm -hmm. or, or is, is lost or something, I don't remember the exact error. But if you see that, more often than not, that's because the machine account in Active Directory its password is not synced up with the uh, the domain controller that it's trying to use presently, or there's some sort of mismatch somewhere. You know, we had a discussion yesterday about best ways to fix that. And I know Brig, I don't know if he sent it here, but Brig said uh, sending a new password down will reset that. Brig, can you, if you're in, on he, the chat, he's man. actually in here. Oh, Brig, oh, why yeah. don't you say hi? Hi, hello. <laughs> you gotta get closer to the mic there, man. Hi, hello. There you go. Okay, so <laughs> what is it you can do to get those things back online? The trust relationship. Oh, there's a uh, there's a password, uh, or I mean, excuse me, there's a PowerShell. Uh, yep. Actually, it's kind of a one-liner that you can just use. It doesn't even require a reboot. Um, the actual command, I don't remember what it is, but uh, it's easy to find, and I'm sure that Chris will probably have oh, something. There it is on screen. Shortly. Right here. So I already have it pulled up on TechNet. Did I steal your thunder? I, no, I'm just prepared. Yes, yeah. preparation, key to success, or something. There you go. So, uh, reset computer machine password. This is the replacement uh, of net dom reset password. Mm -hmm. Net dom can do all these as well. So, if you're familiar with net dom, use it, uh, yeah. please. If you want to kind of get your toes wet with PowerShell, everybody does. Let's be honest. This is the way to do that. You can reset the machine account because, like users, like your normal uh, credentials that you would use to log into Active Directory, your machines do the same thing. Mm -hmm. They have an account. They have a password. You don't see it because it's kind of changing w without your help, kind of in the back yeah, of things. Background. And so this can actually reset that if you have that issue going on with the machine. You can provide it a, the credentials you want to use. You can uh, set the target. You can. There's a lot of different things that you can do uh, with with this one. Please explore it. Check it out. This is the way that you can fix a lot of those issues. Yeah. So we'd show you that, but I couldn't get one to expire fast enough yesterday. So, <laughs> like I said, oh, I was mentioning uh, before the show. Uh, we've got our DNS and DHCP set up so well, we had the hardest time breaking stuff <laughs> yesterday so we could show you guys how to do this. So, You yeah. think we're joking, we're yeah, not. Yeah. So we'll show you how to get your, your DNS and DHCP kind of bulletproof too. So. Yeah, absolutely. What else you got, man? Well, let's see. So uh, another thing that uh, you might see is uh, with, with that machine, that trust relationship, you might also have 
the need for whatever reason to also add or remove machines from the domain. Mm. Same thing, if you're familiar with netdom, you can do it that way. You can also do it with PowerShell, same, similar command syntax. Uh, I'm not going to show you an example of this because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but add computer and remove computer. Um, but uh, as Shane actually pointed out, is pointing out here in the uh, chat window, you have to have the uh, remote server admin tools installed on the target in order to use NetDOM. Uh, PowerShell, you don't have that requirement because you can actually run it on your local machine and target other machines. Or, of course, you can run, run over there as long as you have the proper uh, version mm -hmm. of PowerShell. I think uh, the add computer, remove computer, and, and reset computer uh, machine password, they were introduced in, in two, I think. Don't quote me on this. but. They had additional features added after three. Do you see this look? I, I know. It's... Do you know what the look is? I can't believe you keep that in your mental Rolodesk. It was an old version. <laughs> That's where it started, and it works in like five, right? So it works in five. five. Go, go to odds, five. The odds are is that it was <laughs> Good in Lord, two. Dude. I, I'm pretty sure. And, but anyway. Yeah. PowerShell Zealot. It's a big deal, though, because a lot of machines, though, if you're still on PowerShell 2 for some reason, upgrade, please. Yeah. If you're using Vista 2008 and you can't, well, the... <laughs> If you're using Sorry. Vista, really? But, I know. <laughs> Gra grab a Sorry. copy of XP upgrade. <laughs> but, yeah, seriously. Yeah. But really, that, that's something that you really should yeah. address, and this is the way to do it. The only difference between the older versions and the new ones is that you can pass more credentials a little more easily. Yeah. So, that's, it's kind of nice, nice stuff to do that, but that, that's kind of okay. simple, straightforward. If you need some help, you know, hit up support, and they'll probably get it forwarded to me. I can point you in the right direction, but it is pretty straightforward. Just look up add computer, remove computer, just like we have here, or reset computer machine password. So Surprisingly, it's, you can find that on TechNet, huh? I know. They have so much Amazing. there. Amazing. It's great. So, yeah. So what else have we run, run into a lot of times? So uh, I guess just, you see our inventory is up and running. I had to go and build a new DNS and put a bunch of junk in there, as you guys can tell from... If you look behind me and Chris there, we got target computer offline, target name mismatch, computer unreachable. What else we got, Chris? Yeah, well, we got a lot of Pretty much everything in here is broken. It's true. <laughs> and if you were an administrator and didn't know or are familiar with DNS, you might look at this and want to cry. Yeah. Don't cry. What's, the, what's this uh, write this, write this to? Oh, uh, those are computers I made. What is, what is I, that? What is I, that was, I, I imagine changing the word write to another word, okay? <laughs> all right, you pick whatever word you want to put in there. All right, but the, I went right. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> so so we're it very with creative with IT professionals. Pejorative. <laughs> so okay, and then a couple other things to notice. I pulled up the thesaurus and put in the word car, and all the other ones I made yesterday are different renditions of car: clunker, motor, wheels, whatever. <laughs> what? I was busy. I needed some help. Synonym car. <laughs> Thank you, Google. Thank you, like Google. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so. Okay, so we got computer name mismatch. Chris, this happens a lot. I mean, it happens a lot to everybody, especially when yep. you got a junked out DNS like I've made here. Yes, it does. So, how do you, let's just do some troubleshooting on that. Absolutely. So, we've, we've created a couple uh, custom tools to kind of showcase some tools that you should be using when you're troubleshooting DNS issues, if you suspect DNS issues anyway. Uh, NBT stat is a big one. Yeah, now, uh, let's, let's just run some of these from the command line to show yep. everybody. Um, yeah. Stuff. So, okay, so first of all, we know that, uh, and I'll put that back, motor, target name mismatch right above there. Right. So, if we go and ping it, huh, hey, there's a response. it says it's there. So, so, life's good, right? Yeah. We know it's online. It says it's online. Why are we getting target name mismatch? Well, that's a good question. So, most people know NS lookup, so we'd run an NS lookup. That's what I would do first. Look up on motor, motor in. Hmm. Tells you where it's checking out. There it is. Okay. It says it is. What else? Now, okay, so, and then the other thing would be an NBT stat. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, the difference between NS lookup and NBT stat is NS lookup is like, uh, you go to the post office and say, post office and say, well, where does Chris live? And they give me an address. NBT stats, like I walk up to the address and I knock on the door to see if Chris is actually there. And it might be someone else, someone mm -hmm. you might not expect. So this is what NBT stat minus, and it's going to be a capital A is the... the uh, if we're going to do the IP address. Yep. So in this case, let's do that same IP address. We have 10.0.3.240. Let's see what the result is. Hmm. Well. That 
is Bill. That's Bill Murray. Right. Huh. Famous. Famous Bill Murray <laughs> <laughs> shows up. Wow. So okay. what you, you can read from here, though, is the, the type uh, on the column under type here, uh -huh. the unique value is what's saying this is the, the, the computer name. Uh, the group is kind of usually pointing to this the This is who answered the door. Yeah. And what happens if you do NDBT? I can't even say it, man. On motor, specifically. Let's actually do it on the name, yes. Yeah. It's a lowercase a. Motor. Hmm. Shows motor. This is very interesting. They don't match. Not good. That's bad. That means there's something wrong somewhere in DNS. Whether it's locally on your machine that you're running this from or from a DNS server somewhere along the way. So what would you instantly I mean, imagine you would do first thing on your machine? Is it possible your uh, DNS cache should be flushed? That's what I would do. That's a good, good, good point. Let's do that. In so, fact, that's a command that already is in Windows. A lot of you may be familiar with the IP config command shows you your information mm -hmm. well you can also flush dns from this which clears that so that it actually queries it rather than pulling from the, the cache yep. so oh it requires elevation awesome so let's actually run that, as administrator. run that as administrator there we go bring that back down so do it again and it cleared now we can do the same test again pinging motor See if it's the same one. It looks like it's still pulling up the same IP yeah. address that was that uh, was Bill. So mm -hmm. something's still wrong, which means you have other steps to test yeah. along the way. So you know at this point, DNS is returning you the wrong address. Yep. And it could be anything from your local hosts file. If you've ever had people uh, manipulate or play around with the host file and forget about it, it happens. Yeah. Uh, that that can be a cause of it, or your actual DNS server. Mm -hmm. uh, we do. We can, we. Let's show it, yeah. Let's Chris made this. some tools. It was awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we have some custom tools we made to actually do that a lot simpler. Probably ought to highlight Mr. Motor yes. there. Yes. So on Motor, if you wanted to run the same thing, the did, NBT did, stat. Did you just draw a Corgi, an ASCII Corgi? Kind of. Okay. <laughs> I like to separate my commands. This is a Chris best practice custom tools. I like to have mine separate from the, the ones that are built in because if you, if you just name them like DNS here, it'll fit in alphabetically. I don't like that. So I want them separated. So I add this to prefix it. So yeah. I'm so gonna punch table flip <laughs> this is over. I am. It's it's coming dude. <laughs> Yay. So here we here we do. Here we go. We have this. It's the same thing that we just typed before. It just actually does it directly. Okay. So then it I don't have it closing so you can still, you know, oh well is that correct? You can then ping motor and see if you know things are lining up or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so you can actually see the, the results from that command directly. But we do have a few custom tools here for that. One is the NPT stat uh, using the host name and the IP address as seen before. But it, uh, our custom tools, I'm pulling this information directly from PDQ Inventory's mm -hmm. database. Okay. So if you have a computer that you've scanned successfully before and it gives an IP address, but since that time the IP address has changed or you've had a host uh, entry uh, change or a DNS entry change, if you use the command that does the MBT stat IP, it's just going to pull from the old one or the correct one or however you want to view this, however it's in your environment. It's going to be different than what if you're doing if you're pinging it. True, true. Because there's a problem. JJ, can you zoom in on that command? So you guys can make your own command tools. It's like command slash K and that's like open a command window, keep it open to the K. And then you're on MBT stat and you notice we use the variable target IP address. So whatever machine you've got highlighted, it's going to fill in there and bang. Just like that. Runs for you. We do the same thing with the NBD stat uh, lowercase a, except instead of using target IP address, we use target, because that mm -hmm. just fills the, the target name. So I'm going to let you explain the other tool you built. Okay. And then are you going to make that available for everybody after we tweak it a little bit? I think we want to. Okay. This, this might be a useful tool. Uh, if you're interested, you know, let us know. We'll, if there's a lot of interest, we definitely will make that available. Maybe you ought to show it to them and see if they want to be interested. No. <laughs> Why would we do that? Okay. All right. So the... the Prelude to that, though, is this other one, the MPT yeah. stat IP from ping. Mm -hmm. All I'm doing is basically doing a ping on a target from inventory, but it could be different than what is actually set as the IP address in inventory, because each machine, when you open it up, if it's uh, scanned mm -hmm. and has been able to find an IP address, it'll have that. So it'll actually use that IP address unless you want to pull it from ping, which sometimes they're different, sometimes they're not, but we also do have the, it pulls it from ping as well, just oh, okay. so you know. Uh, it's just doing a for command on the You're very command thorough, line. Chris. Has I tried to be. told you that? You're very thorough. I attempt to be. <laughs> okay, this last one, our, I just call it a troubleshooting script. It does what we just talked about and just kind of wraps it all together and just kind of cleans up the output for you mm -hmm. guys uh, to make it easier on, on me specifically. But 
but everybody else by you know extension so okay and the other thing is you guys if you decide you want this um tell chris you don't want the corgi in front of it that's just wrong dude it, but it's, that it's flipping corgi. a table look at that it's going Whoa. is that what it's doing yeah that's the it's, angry guy flipping a table yeah so here we go so we run the troubleshooting script I got, got a vivid imagination. That just looked like bad to me. It looked like <laughs> someone, like I got a bad virus on there, and then it put a name after it. It's a table. <laughs> is that what it is? A table. So here we go. You can see the output on the, on the command itself it says IP config flush command. This is just arbitrary stuff that I put in there. It was a success. The next command, ping test. I just ping the target. It was able to ping, success. I'll probably end up modifying the output a little bit or, and clean it up and actually show, even if it's a success, what the result you're getting because even though it's successfully pinging an IP address it might not be the correct IP address as we've established. Uh, the next two commands here the admin dollar sign access test that's just as if you were to pull up Windows Explorer and navigate to the machine's mm -hmm. admin dollar share I'm just basically testing if I can connect to it. Can I? No it failed. Unable to reach whack whack motor admin dollar so that failed. Additionally the two tests that we did with the MBT stat same thing, it does a comparison test, and you can see that and there's different match. Yeah. Yep. So, so something's wrong, guys. So, again, that's a lot to get to the fact that we know something's wrong. Yeah. Okay, but the nice thing is, because we've run all these tests, we know we've got mismatched IP and name. Yep. So, it's a DNS issue. We know where to go from here. Exactly. Wish we had some, like, magic powder to, like, sprinkle on it to fix it, but there's not. There can be so many things wrong, we're just giving some ideas. Magic powder? Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. DNS fix. DNS fix. It doesn't work that way. Well, speaking of DNS fix, should we go and take a look at DNS? Let's do it. Please. All right. So first thing, uh, here is the uh, server that uh, we've got our DNS set up. My bad DNS guys took me a bit to get this set up. And if we look at it, again, we've got just all kinds of junk in here. And I want to point a couple of things out here because they're going to come into play when I tell you a little bit about it. So does everybody know what scavenging is? Is that when you like hunt for treasure? Yes, that's exactly it. No, scavenging in your DNS is basically it goes and gets rid of old records, okay? You'll notice some of these records if you look over here. Let's see if I can do this. In this column right here. Windows key. Windows key. Let's try that again. Nope, that didn't work. All right. So, at any rate, this column right here under timestamp, you'll notice I've got some really old things. I went back in time, set those up for you yesterday so we could see some stuff need to be scavenged. So scavenging has got to be set up in two places, okay? And there's a couple things you need to know about DNS scavenging. First of all, first place you need to set it up, you go here to the server level. Now, you can set this up on any of your DNS servers as long as they're replicating, but go to the primary. It's probably the best place to go. And you go to properties. And then if you go to advanced, man, where was that? Uh, uh, thank you. Go ahead and help me. Oh, I'm on Murray. That's why. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Go to the bill, which is the name of our DNS server. Okay. Thank you. Enable automatic scavenging. Okay. Scavenging period is seven days. Now we're going to talk about the scavenging period. Thank you, Chris, for keeping me on track there, bro. All right. So we're going to set that there. The other place you need to set it is at the DNS domain level there. That's right. So we go to properties on that. Okay. And again, you'll see it you come under general under aging okay now we got two different time sets here now I am going to set sca uh, scavenge stale records resource records there's a no refresh interval and a refresh interval and then uh, Brig you can probably have to jump in and help me out with the other basically it's this right the machine gets registered and there is a no refresh interval that's set which is basically in this case seven days okay and then you have a refresh interval okay which is it's got that much time to refresh in your DNS before it gets scavenged. If it gets refreshed in there, it's fine. And then there's the scavenging period, which we set at seven days. So a lot of people will set this and go, hey, I set this up at seven days. I've got old stuff in there that's been 15, 16 days, and it's not disappearing. you got to do the math, guys. Seven days for no refresh, seven days for a refresh, and then finally, seven days to scavenge. So, if the planets align weirdly, the furthest out it'll be, it'll be 21 days before it gets scavenged. Yeah. So is that a good time frame? Well, here's a couple of things you need to keep in mind on scavenging. One, your scavenging time should never be set to less than your DHCP lease time. That would be bad. <laughs> what, what, what can That's you That's like crossing the streams in Ghostbusters, That's okay? Exactly Don't do it, happen. okay? So another thing is, if you've got a lot of like laptops that go wireless and then they go 
uh, you know, wired and they change buildings and IPs are changing a lot, you know, you may want to set that a little shorter. Now, you know, we had a little debate yesterday in my office over some scotch. It's always a good time to good debate. At any rate, was what's, you know, if what's in a good, a good aggressive scavenging time? And basically, I, I had to defer to Brig because he probably knows more about this than the rest of us. He goes, because I would never set it more than three days. Three days for no refresh, three days for the refresh, and three days for the scavenging. So just be careful, guys, whatever you set it at, okay? That's aggressive. Three days on all those is an aggressive scavenging, okay? So now I've got this set. The other place that you really need to set this is in your DHCP. So when it comes to what refreshes or what sets the IP and the naming in the DNS server, mm -hmm. you want if your DHCP server is assigning addresses, why not have it go in and make the changes? Okay. If you don't set that, your computers will do it individually and they'll do it yeah, willy-nilly. Is that a good word? It's a technical term. Technical term, like willy-nilly. <clears throat> so I'm going to just pop up our... Oh, I need to check that out. Uh, I'm going to pop up our uh, DHCP server. I'm mouthing the password right now. Password it's one. It's not password. Oh, Capital P password. Capital P password. And then, any, okay, so here's our DHCP server. Okay, here, we're also going to want to set, we are going to want to set, boink, properties. No, oh, where was it that I set this? It's not on IPv4 itself. I'm sorry, thank you. DNS, thank you, you got to be on IP4 properties. Okay, default um, is usually always dynamically update DNS and PTR records. Default is going to be this one right here. You want to always dynamically set up these at the DHCP level. Again, remember when I was telling you guys it was hard for us to break this? We had to turn that off so we go in and break it, okay? So every time a machine registers, it clears up your DNS, okay? So once again, because I can't find it without Chris's help, go to DHCP under IP4, Properties, DNS, Always Dynamically Update, DNS, PTR Records. Life is good. Yeah, we got a question. Sweet. We like Z questions. Got a great question from Rory S. How does one prevent DNS records for servers from being removed when scavenging the zones? Well, are, are they stale? <laughs> that's a good question. So scavenging cleans out stale records, right? That's what it does. Yeah. So one, as long as your machines are registering, it should clear that issue up. Brig, you want to say something, buddy? Um, we got the expert in here. Yeah, so there's a couple of ways. So long as the servers are on or they're updating mm -hmm. on a regular basis, you don't need, really need to worry about scavenging. Scavenging is it's very, there's there's those safety measures of the no refresh and the refresh interval, mm -hmm. which basically is like, we okay, we want to make sure that we get anything that's going to be updated. If it's, uh, you can make this a little bit more complicated. In fact, actually, you can make it a lot more complicated by using the DNS uh, update proxy. But just for your general everyday purposes, you should never have a server uh, record scavenged so long as that server is on and on your network. There you go. Now, I got a question for you, Brick. Okay. If I go and statically set an IP address, will that get scavenged? Uh, y no, the static okay. sets do not get scavenged. So if I static set it in D DNS, it's there till I remove it. It's in the, uh, yeah, it's there. Okay. That's the other way to do it. So, yep. This is why we keep Brig around. He's just this basin of knowledge. <laughs> that is true. And he, he's fun to drink with. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do we have any more questions? We got another question? Well, all right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, where are we at, man? Well, so, okay, so we've got the uh, DNS host name. Let's talk about this guy. Okay, go ahead, Chris. So uh, another thing you might see, uh, especially uh, with people in environments who are setting up and getting ready for the, the upcoming year, whether it be school year or what have you, uh, one common thing that we see is when you're setting up Active Directory Sync and in inventory, That's right. and you're not seeing the machines that you're expecting to see. There is a very common cause for this, and uh, we're gonna show that to you. So. In 
the preferences. I'm just using control comma to pop that open. Active Directory. Uh, if you don't have Active Directory Sync set up, we highly recommend that you do if you are able to and you're on a domain because this solves a lot of your issues. Yeah, sure. Period. But sometimes when you are adding machines manually into Active Directory, you're not joining them from the machine, but you might, as, be, as part of your imaging solution, actually create computer objects in the Active Directory environment. If you create them, when you first create them, it does not have the DNS, or excuse me, the Active Directory uh, attribute DNS hostname set. Without that, it will not show up. Correct. Okay. Uh, when we sync, that's what we look for in order to filter out those objects that we you, you aren't going to be able to do anything on inside inventory. It's a quick way to know that you know when we're syncing with Active Directory, you actually have good data that's pulled from, or should have good data that's pulled from Active Directory. <laughs> I, I knock on wood here. Should yeah. Um, but that is one important thing to know that if you encounter this, so if you have an OU with a bunch of machines that, that were set up, but they haven't been you know, turned on, or they haven't been fully configured, but you have the objects in Active Directory, and you tell PDQ Inventory to sync uh, that container and that has those objects, you're not going to see it yeah. in inventory even if you sync. It, it will not show it's up. It's got to connect at least once. Yeah. So, so that's an important issue that caveat comes up again. Issue? Caveat, that's a good go. way to say it. It's, it's something caveat. to be aware of. So it's not going to happen to most of you, but those that it does happen to, it's going to be frustrating because you're going to be pulling your hair going, oh, what's going on? So don't cry. And th that was done on purpose, guys. We did that on purpose just to make sure we get clean data in. Yeah. Really. So. That's essentially that. Yeah. Any other questions? What do we got? Our next question comes from the MON to the ICA. Yes, my friends, it's Monica <laughs> K. We have in-house applications that I want to be able to push out to new users' computers via deploy. If they are logged on, only their credentials will be accepted for the installation. Will I need to set up an interactive deployment for the apps to install successfully in that case? Hi, Monica. Hey. Thanks for the question. Uh, you should be able to do it as just logged on user. Yeah, I would do it as logged on user. I mean, yeah, if, if you can deploy it silently and, and use their credentials, I would do it. Yeah, if it's not silent, you, you will have to do deploy user interactive uh, unless for whatever reason there's there's a workaround for this uh, this issue of their, their credentials. But if it's not, which it sounds like there's not, uh, then try the, the logged on users mm -hmm. as the run as uh, for the credentials. And it should work because it's just going to run in the context of that logged on user. Yeah. Change the step to run as run only if there's a user logged on, and you're good to go. You may run into issues if they don't have access or the ability to install stuff on their yeah. machine. That's the only caveat there. So, in which case, deploy user interactive is going to be the one to be do. One, yeah. But again, if if you have if you run into any specific problems, let us let us know. Hit us up. We'll see if we can you know kind of work through something and get you going. Yeah. Any more, JJ? Sweet. That's all we well, got. Karen, as, uh, as my grandmother used to say, that's all I know. <laughs> so everybody is set now, right? No more DNS issues ever. ever. Try, yeah, and we've got good tools here. Chris will try and get that PowerShell thing cleaned up, and we'll post it for you. You get out as a custom tool. Sweet. All right. Hey, school, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks. Sayonara. Thanks for joining us for the webcast today. I want to congratulate Rory S. and Monica K. Just uh, shoot us with an email, uh, webcast at adminarsenal.com. We'll get your, uh, your PDQ swag out to you. If you have any other questions, make sure to hit up our support forums, and we'll see you back here next week.